we still continue with education. We need to understand education so that when you come to school, you know the value of education. You know the reason as to why your parents pay school fees for you. So you need to know more about education. And here I am to bring you more information so that you can get more knowledge within this service. So what I expect from you is to, uh, to, be able to, to be able to identify the types of education. Secondly, to mention the types of schools. We need to know the kinds of schools we go to. So here we are. Think about those types of education. Remember, in the previous lesson, we looked at places where we get education from, the knowledge and the skills. We mentioned them. Now, we need to know that the exact education we get from those places. One of the type of education is informal. Informal education. And the second type is for more education. What are these education? If I talk about informal, what do I mean? Formal. What do I understand by the word formal education? So, to begin with, that is informal education. What is this informal? So, informal education is the type of education got from home. So, this business of learning, that activity of learning, getting the knowledge and skills is done from home. And it is passed on to us, provided to us by parents, can be elders, uncles, aunties, we have the grandparents, these are our relatives. They pass on formal education to us. So you find that in your homes, there are different skills you gain, like cooking, they call you to the kitchen, you try out. You find yourself at first you didn't know how to wash. Your auntie teaches you how to wash. At the end of the day, you get that skill. Mopping, you find yourself mopping the house so well now, but you were first taught. So that education, that way of learning, you get the skills from home is what we call informal education. And our parents do a great job. They deserve a clap. They deserve a hug. Those aunties, so wherever they tell you to do work, please involve yourself. Even though they have not called you, say, auntie, can I help you? Can I try it out? My dear, it is so vital. It's not a burden, but we learn from it. And we gain from that. Uh, under this type of education, which is a formal education, we learn how to behave. I know Tom, they always tell you, don't do this. You have to behave in such a way. Don't abuse your friends. Speak politely. Yeah. They teach that at home. Work. They teach us how to work, to cook food, to organize the house, and do other things. Uh, they also tell us local medicine when it comes to our grandparents. That is such a great moment when you are with them. They always tell you different things. This medicine cures this. We are supposed to mix this and this. So we get this from our parents. Also culture to know the way of behaving, the way of living, how we are supposed to conduct ourselves what is based on our culture. So we get this from, oh, this is all done under formal education, and we get all this from homes. We have another type of education. This is when we are going to get the difference. The first one, which is informal, is got from homes. What about formal? This is the type of education got from schools. It is, prov it is provided by trained teachers, tutors. Lecturers, even professors, are found, uh, do offer formal education. In this type of education, know this clearly well, in this type
type of education we learn how to read and write the moment somebody comes out and that one person is trained comes out to teach you how to read and write know that that somebody is passing on formal education and it is got from schools i know you love this so much and what i'm doing on right now is what we call formal education i'm teaching you how to read how to write get it so it is formal education so still under schools we need to know the levels of schools remember we have the universities we have the colleges so we need to know as we keep on learning we need to know which level am i now after this level which level will i go to or which is the next level which level is my young sister huh? or which is the first level we need to know so the first one, we have the nursery schools. That's, those are the beginning schools where you start from, you go to play, you know. You have a lot of fun. You are introduced to school. We have the primary schools. Right now I'm handling primary children. Uh, we have the secondary schools. And lastly, colleges and universities. So we need to know in detail, what are these schools? Uh -huh. We have the nursery schools, you can see. Your young sisters and brothers are in these schools. They come back home, they tell you a lot. You know, today I learned how to scribble. Teacher told me this. They learn to sing some songs. You know, they come back home when they are happy, looking forward to school the next day. Uh, we have the primary schools. You can see such a beautiful school. Right now, I'm attending to the children who go to primary schools. So Kampala Quality is one of the primary schools. That's why we say Kampala Quality Primary Schools. So from nursery, you prepare yourself for primary. And primary runs from P1 to primary 7. So from primary 7, this is when you do your PLE. That is primary living examination this examination prepares you for the next level and that is none other than secondary so here are the secondary schools you can see even the dressing code changes they are now mature from the primary children you can see they are very smart even their knowledge is more than a primary child so from primary you'll prepare for secondary after sitting for primary living examination that determines whether you qualify to go for the next level and from the primary from the secondary level uh, that one runs from senior one to senior six you have to sit for another examination that is uganda advanced certificate uh, of education yeah when you sit for this educate uh, for this examination my dear and you qualify you go for the last level you can see graduates so those are the colleges and universities very happy they have graduated when it comes to this level they train you in a certain area based on a certain skill that's when you got you are getting prepared to start working, you get a job, you become independent. You know, you are now big enough to care for yourself when you reach this level. That's why even your parents go back. They go back at the universities, they study, they become professors, they become engineers, they become pilots, they become big people in certain areas. So here, that's what they do specifically. So having looked at the levels of schools, we need to know the types of schools. Since you go to school, you, know, you need to know the kind of school you are in. So we have what we call the private schools, private schools, and we also have the government schools. 
the government schools, they are public. They are for all. Eh? They give a chance for all. They are public schools. So to start with, oh, to take you back to the private schools, uh, you need to know the kind of school you are in and what a private school is. When I talk about private, this one is owned by a person or a few people. They run it. It is based on a person. So the management, the system of a school is entirely based on a person. That's when we shall have the director, the owner of the person, of the school, sorry. The owner, he runs his school the way he wishes or the way he wants it to be. The quality, the management, it is all based on that person because he knows what he or she wants out of that school. So the school you, you are in, if you go to Kampala Quality School, it is a private school. That's why you see the quality in it because that's what the director wants from his school or from her school. So it is a private school. So try to identify more private school, schools that are owned by people. And when it comes to the government, as you've seen, government and their public schools, they give a chance to everyone to learn. So here, you pay less money. Oh, the requirements are fewer compared to the private schools. That means the requirements and the school, the school fees is entirely based on the government. So the decisions within the school are made by the government, so they give a chance to all, to those parents who cannot afford to go to the private schools. Okay. So we need to know all about this government setting and the government schools. So there are certain reasons as to why the government came up with these schools, which we call the government schools. And that was in the year 1997. It started with the primary education. That is the universal primary education. Later on, it introduced USE. That is the universal secondary education. So we need to know as to why it decided to come up with that system. Why it decided to offer education. We call it free education to us. One, to teach children how to read and write. So their plan, their focus was entirely on that. They wanted to give a chance to every child to learn how to read and write. Another thing, to give a chance to poor parents to educate their children. There are those parents who could not afford taking their children to the private schools because with, with private schools, the requirements are more. They pay more compared to the government schools. So there are those parents who could not afford. So instead of a parent letting his or her child stay home or forego education, which is informal education, rather take that child to a government school to learn how to read and write. And lastly, to develop the education system. So the government came up with different ideas on how to develop education, on how to person the reading and writing. That's why now the government can introduce, can give, sorry, can give uh, learning materials to children so that they can develop the education system. So when I ask what is UPE in full, it is universal primary education, and USE in full, universal secondary education. Those two are provided by the government. Oh, when it comes to education, we need to know the Minister of Education and Sports. That is none other than Honorable Janet Kataha Museven. I believe she's familiar to you the wife to the current president, that's why she has a name, Seven, because his husband is Yori Kaguta Seven. So this lady here is the Minister of Education and Sports. Hope you've attained a lot 
from this lesson. So I shall leave you with the exercise which will task you to recall. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being good children. Let's meet next time. Stay safe. I love you.